My name is Matt Ober. Um, I am the CTO and co-founder of Pinata. We are an IPFS uh, tool suite pinning service. I've uh, been around for almost three years now, I think. And our, like my, Michael said, our, our kind of catchphrase is we are the easiest way to use IPFS. So everything we do is kind of geared towards just making your experience as a developer uh, hassle-free. So today I wanted to uh, start a, have a talk on you know, how we scaled from a very small, uh, what I would call an experimental hackathon tool to the global pinning IPFS infrastructural service that we are today. Uh, it's kind of a fun little journey and figure it might be interesting for some, some of the people in the space. Um, all right, so like I said, we started in ETH Berlin. We were in 2018, a proof of concept. We were offering things up as a hackathon tool. Uh, we provided pretty, uh, pretty minimal functionality, upload a file, retrieve it from a gateway. Um, yeah, that was basically it. So uh, during ETH Berlin, we went around uh, spreading the word about Pinata. We wanted to get feedback, see how people were using our system. And then under the hood, we were running a super, super simple setup. Um, basically a monolith is, is uh, what a lot of you might know this as. So we were running everything on a singular machine in the cloud. So one machine hosted our API and then our one IPFS node, which was receiving files. Um, yeah, this, this also acted as a gateway. Uh, serving content through the IPFS network and then through our gateway.pinata.cloud URL. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of what it looks like. Everything again is running on uh, one machine, uh, API, node storing content, and then distributing it around through the network and the gateway. Uh, shortly after we launched though, as an actual product, we started to gain traction amongst the Web3 community. And with that traction came a lot higher levels of usage. So. We click, uh, quickly recognized that in order for Pinata to succeed, we were going to need to take what we started off with as kind of an experimental tool and turn it into something that was actually scalable. So it was at this point, we actually decided to take Pinata from an experimental side project to something which we would begin working on full time. And then uh, from here, we, we had some challenges that we faced, uh, you know, scaling from this proof of concept to an actual product. And I want to talk about some of the challenges we faced and then how we overcame them uh, as an engineering team. So the first challenge we ran into was resource problems. We were, again, running everything on a singular machine. And during times of high traffic, uh, this meant that things were getting a little resource constrained and you know, starting to put out fires, um, trying to handle that traffic, scaling the nodes up. Um, you can only handle so much by increasing the resources on a single machine. So we needed to scale outwards. And the first step we took was to separate our host node and our gateway uh, into individual components that were operating independent and independently of each other and then didn't share machine resources. So uh, we had our one machine, which now had our API and our host node, but then we had a separate gateway on a different machine that was in charge of caching content and serving it to the uh, the general public via our gateway. This, this helped with resources for a while, but the, the second challenge we ran into was gonna be downtime. When you're running a product that other products are gonna be building on top of, you need to make sure that everything you're doing uh, is geared towards eliminating downtime from your infrastructure. So in our case, uh, with this single machine set up for the host node, this meant that every time we needed to upgrade our IPFS node, that meant that we had downtime, which as a platform uh, is not great. A lot of this stuff is, uh, may seem kind of obvious. Um, and a lot of this stuff is actually kind of solved for by modern cloud providers. But starting up in the IPFS space, you know, there is no S3 for IPFS. There's no uh, kind of managed database services. We're kind of building everything from scratch. So doing all this manually was kind of a fun process that we, we went through as an engineering team. Um, so in this case, when we took a node offline, things went offline for the duration of that upgrade, and we needed to fix that. So the second, uh, second solution we went through was multiple host nodes. Uh, pretty simple in practice, 
basically meant that we integrated multiple IPFS nodes into our infrastructure, which acted uh, twofold. The first thing was that it would help with load balancing. So content requests would get automatically uh, routed amongst the various nodes that we had online. And uh, that would kind of help, again, balance that load between those nodes so that not a single node became overwhelmed and we could scale out horizontally as needed uh, based on the traffic we were getting. And then this also meant that if we did have a node that we needed to upgrade, we could take portions of our network offline and upgrade them while still keeping uh, full, full availability for our customer base. And this was a, a huge step forward for us. And then the next challenge kind of on board with that was that we had a global community. So we were seeing requests come from everywhere in the world, the United States, South America, Africa, Asia, India, uh, Australia, Europe, like all of these, all of these continents and um, you know, locations around the world were all trying to interact with one region that we had in Europe, which uh, <laughs> was uh, quickly kind of not being as quick as we would have liked for everybody else in the world. Uh, the users in say Australia, for example, were, were receiving pretty long uh, upload times. So we took uh, that as our next upgrade uh, priority because we wanted to make sure that everybody around the world was receiving uh, you know, equally as fast upload times. So our solution to this, similarly to how we scaled out in one region uh, with multiple IPFS nodes, we then scaled out to multiple global locations. So we rolled this out, I think around March of 2020. And then since then, we've been continually expanding to more and more locations. And as of right now, uh, we should be serving content in every major continent of the world through our uh, network of host nodes and gateways. And then, yeah, so with this, uh, this uh, setup, we now have, um, we got two shown here, but we're, like I said, in every continent right now. Uh, requests are gonna get routed to where they need to get routed so people can receive fast uploads and downloads, which is better performance for everybody. So how does uploading work for our setup? Basically a user request will come in and then it's automatically gonna get routed to the nearest data center based on latency. And then once we've chosen the data center, an available IPFS node is going to get choose, uh, chosen for storage based on things like proximity, available free storage, and then the current load that the node is currently experiencing. And so once we've chosen that node, then uh, the content is stored on that node for long-term storage and future retrieval on the network. And speaking of retrieval, uh, retrieval looks pretty similar on our end, but a little slight difference here is that when the user request comes in, the gateway then is going to fetch data from the closest host node. Um, so we have gateways in many more locations around the world than we have host nodes, just because people are retrieving content more often than they're storing it. And the gateway will fetch the content from the closest node that it's able to get it from. And then once that happens, the gateway is going to temporarily cache that content in that region so that if future requests come to that region, uh, it's, it's already cached there. And if other gateways close by need that content as well, we can quickly route it to that uh, gateway region as well for quick retrieval. So it's kind of a quick overview of what our, our network looks like, how we've scaled up uh, to where we are today. Um, what's next on our agenda is going to be a focus on things like content discovery, uh, even faster content uploads, downloads, uh, things like making sure that we're gonna constantly be increasing our rate limits so you guys can upload more and more content um, all the time. And then lastly, we wanna hear from you guys as well. Uh, we wanna hear what you're thinking of, how you're thinking about things, uh, what you'd like to see from our platform. So if anybody ever has any feedback, feel free to drop us a line. We'd, we'd really love to hear it. <laughs>